Let's get to Michigan specifically. I've laid out the five key questions that I think need to be answered here during the course of this of, of Michigan spring football that got underway last week already. What are your thoughts, Mark? Well, I'll let you know a lot of things on both sides of the ball that intrigue me. I do think while I am not quite um, – set on the loss of Josh Gaddis and what that truly means, because if he did, in fact, take the Jim Harbaugh offense and added some nuances to it, I would believe that Matt Weiss in particular and Harbaugh would be smart enough just to steal the game tape, but they've got it right there, that they could continue to implement whatever Josh Gaddis added to that offense. I think Mike McDonald, and this is no knock on Jess Minter, I'm sure he'll do a fine job that Mike McDonald's a loss. You know, I, I go back to something that Jim Harbaugh said during Big Ten Media Days and during one of the uh, first uh, news conferences during summer camp last year in explaining why Mike McDonald is so valuable. And he talked about how he had the knack of understanding, evaluating players and understanding where they fit best, what the combinations worked best, and he just had a knack for player evaluation and combinations and schemes and how to fit players into schemes and to hide weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And that's that's difficult to replicate. And so there's a reason why John Harbaugh turned right around and named him defensive coordinator at the NFL level for one of the best franchises in the league. So Mike McDonald, I'm thinking, is going to be a substantial loss. I mean, we had a corner last year starting for us, Vincent Gray, who as a high school recruit ran like a 4 7 40. I mean, that doesn't get you a scholarship to play corner in Coosa, let alone in the Big Ten at Michigan, right? Okay. And and you saw how much he got exposed in Don Brown's defense, right? Last year, I can only off the top of my head think of like three plays where he was like deep downfield in coverage by himself. And that gets to what you're talking about. I, I agree that he's a loss. I thought that, and I said this again a little while before you came on, I, I the wrong Michigan assistant won the Broyles Award. He should have won it because you have to understand the way that Jim coaches as well. This is very similar to Norm Chow and Pete Carroll, where Norm Chow was basically the co-head coach of the USC football program. All right, he just ran the offensive side of the ball. I mean, a, a, a tremendous amount of authority is delegated to a defensive coordinator at Michigan because Jim is strictly an offensive guy. Doesn't mean he doesn't have any say at all, but he knows what his limits are. And so whether you're Don Brown uh, or – um, your uh, Mike McDonald and now Jesse Minter, uh, you get to – and this is why, uh, you know, the first defensive coordinator got a job as a head coach right away. You basically are a co-head coach of this football team. I mean, you make a lot of those kinds of executive decisions as the defensive coordinator at Michigan. So I, it's a package deal. And I kind of get the sense that's maybe more where Ohio State's going with the addition of uh, Knowles from Oklahoma State, that he's basically going to be the co-head coach and run that side of the ball. So, yeah, that's a big loss for sure. What else stood out to you? So what could help Minter, though, is just the personnel additions on the defensive side of the ball through the 2022 signing class if these guys turn out to be as good and as good quickly as they could be meaning you lose brad hawkins and daxton hill you replace them with zeke berry and keon sab not that they're automatically going to be the starters but just talking about the infusion of talent in the 22 class on the defensive side of the ball those are two top 15 safeties in the country and, and then of course Will Johnson, if he's as special as he may turn out to be as the number one player in the state and a top three cornerback, uh, the infusion of young talent into the secondary could be huge. And I'm really intrigued, Steve, by the emergence, continued emergence, uh, not that he hasn't proven himself, but maybe superstardom of Donovan Edwards, uh, who turn, could turn out to be the biggest Michigan offensive star since, I don't know, Desmond Howard? Biggest star since Charles Woodson. I know that's a lot to ask or expect. Um, so the running back room is is intriguing to me. It's loaded. It's arguably the best in the Big Ten. Although I do think that Hassan Haskins' uh, toughness, determination, his uh, workload that he took on in the fourth quarter of games uh, might be a little underestimated, and he could be missed. Uh, we'll see how good the offensive line is, of course, missing a few starters from last year, but should be just as good as the one that won the Joe Moore Award. So those are the things that stand out to me. Uh, I know that you talked to leadership as well. Ronnie Bell's back. Mm -hmm. 
Um, he was the one guy in that 2020 team that showed me a lot of fight, a lot of determination, mm -hmm. tried to spark the team at times, uh, even when it was a bit futile. But he comes back as a, a good receiver, but more of uh, making that impact in a really good wide receiver room as a leader. And then, of course, the quarterback competition. Uh, I believe it should be wide open. Uh, Cade McNamara, I think it should be explained to him, hey, if you're as good as you um, – have shown us and we believe in you, then you need to fight for your job. And it's wide open between JJ and Cade McNamara. That's the way I would run the show. When I, when I look at the roster, uh, the, the running back duo of Donovan Edwards and Blake Horam, that's the most explosive pair of running backs we've had here since Bianca Batuka and Wheatley played together. Now I'm not saying either one of them is going to be as good as either one of those two guys were, but as a combo, we just haven't had, We've been lucky to have one kind of explosive guy, let alone two of them. You're right about Haskins. I mean, Haskins had, if, if you look at the last 10 year or last five years in college football, top two running backs for yards after contact. Najee Harris is number one. You know who number two is? Hassan Haskins. So when you had Hassan Haskins, third and three was a running down, or it could be. Third and four could be a running down, or it could be. That did give you a lot of flexibility on offense. But they're going to be very explosive there. This is the best wide receiver room at Michigan since way back in the day when we started two pros like uh, Greg McMurtry and Chris Calloway, and their backups were guys like Derek Alexander and Desmond Howard. I mean, we've just not had this kind of – this is, this is you know, perennial for y'all. But for us – we are not used to having this kind of depth and explosiveness at the receiver position. It's to the point that I often forget Ronnie Bell is coming back, and he only led the team in receiving two years in a, in a row. I kind of forget about him with everybody else coming in. Um, I'm not really worried about the offensive line at all. They've recruited so well there. Uh, it, it, I, to me, Stuber is a journeyman pro. Um, that's not a guy that's, you're not losing Jake long or somebody there. I think in fact, the other tackle, Ryan Hayes, who's coming back, I could see him getting beaten out. That's how well Michigan's recruited there. Um, and then you're bringing in a guy who was a Remington award finalist at Virginia and all American to take over Vastardis at center offensively brother there. We are as loaded as we have been in a long time on the offensive side of the ball. And we haven't even addressed the quarterback situation. It's, it is possible, if not likely, a guy that led Michigan to the Big Ten Championship is going to lose his job. That doesn't happen very often, you know. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, it's fascinating. You mentioned Sab um, and a couple of guys in the secondary, Will Johnson. You combine them with DJ Turner uh, and Rod Moore and um, – R.J. Moten, that's as deep of an athletic of a secondary that I, we've had in a long time. The problem is a lot, of, several of those guys have not played any college football at all, so that's going to take some time. The big issue is the pass rush. And, you know, so much of it was those two guys because you mentioned Mike McDonald covering weaknesses. He covered a lot of weaknesses by we got to play a lot of seven guys back if we wanted to because we knew on just about any passing down against just about anybody – until we got to the Orange Bowl, that we were going to be able to get uh, you know pressure with just Hutchinson and, and Ojabo off the edge. That's not a given this year. So we're going to have to play more of a more of a of a modern approach to defense, more disguises, more blitzes, things of that nature. And that will be fascinating to see how that works itself out. The good news is, look at the look at our schedule, Mark, and tell me who's the passing attack that you think is ready to – I mean, Maryland have a good passing attack. They can't stop anybody. So who's the passing attack with a legitimate defense? I don't know that we even come close to playing anybody like that until we get to well into mid-October and against Penn State. So that's several games where you have a chance to get those guys that are inexperienced experienced. But as I told you a few weeks ago, I know that this is kind of the urban legend in your fan base – 33 of the 47 guys that were on the two deep in the Orange Bowl in the Big Ten Championship game are back on this team. So this idea that this was just a team of fifth-year seniors and COVID super seniors that hit the snake eyes jackpot once that is all over Ohio State internet fandom, that's just not accurate. And you saw that with Bill Connolly's returning production metrics and rankings where Michigan was fourth. Now, Ohio State was one, but everybody thinks that they're going to be have everybody come back. I know there is this internet legend out there that everybody that did anything for Michigan last year is gone. That's actually not even close to the case. 
I'm just marveling at you bowing your chest more and more by the week. You, you just seem like a different man since 4227, and I get it. Uh, you feel much different about this program, aside from Harbaugh's lunacy and running around uh, seeking every NFL job on the map. Uh, besides that yeah. and your tirade concerning that, and understandably so for a few weeks, you are you – are, high on this program that's another reason why i was fine going uh Bo, bill frieder and fire in his ass for it because i knew what kind of roster they had this is the this is actually an ideal time to probably bring another coach in and let him get off with, with a rocket fuel start with the with the roster the two best classes he's had in, in a row were the 2020 and 2021 classes and then they just had another really good class in 2022 so this roster is in pretty good shape. No, we don't even talk about special teams. I mean, I, there's few teams in the country that have a better kicker and punter combo. We got the Groza Award guy coming back. I mean, I, this team's pretty set. And the the one the one area where I have the biggest concern, the pass rush, there's not a lot of teams on that schedule that have explosive passing attacks that if you're still a second or two slow getting home that are going to exp- expose that. Now, the game we most need to win is with a team that's built to blow those kinds of defenses up. So we got 11 weeks to figure that thing out, <laughs> okay? But that's nine months from now. You sure as hell am going to enjoy the last few months. And you're right, man. I'm a different man. Same, Dude, you were a different man the morning after the wedding night, too. You're like, all right, man, that was pretty good. Yeah, I'm a totally different man, Mark. You betcha. Sure I am. Well, prepare for the passing attack and also hope that it uh, is mighty cold in Columbus on that day because obviously the Buckeyes can't handle that. <laughs> you know, you know, Steve. Before you let me go, before you let me go, cut Woody Hayes, and it, Woody yeah, Hayes, buried look, in those short sleeves, is losing his damn mind right now at this. Yes. You realize that? He, where is our Bud Grant mentality? No doubt, on yes, that, in that program anymore. Yes, 